this would be a good transition. Um, I'm glad the as far as the passage you read at the beginning in Ephesians, um, someone I've been dialoguing with someone that listens to us. His name's Jordan, and he has a, a really great question. Um, and specifically in regard to this passage, I thought it'd be a good transition. I think it'll be quick, okay, quick and easy to answer. So his question is, um, he says Ephesians one three through four says that every spiritual blessing, including being chosen to be holy, was given to us in Christ. So if we didn't get in Christ until after regeneration, then how can it be said that we were chosen before regeneration? That would be God choosing us outside of Christ and not in Christ. Okay, so that's he just read the question that I actually sent him in the Facebook message. And so even as I sit there and listen to that, it's a bit of a confusing question unless you, you I think it's easier to be able to stop and actually read through the question to understand what I'm actually asking. And so uh, I want to explain that question so so it's clear to to you guys listening and watching what I'm actually asking and the problem I'm actually presenting. And so so what I asked is Ephesians 1, 3-4, it says that every spiritual blessing has been given to us in Christ. And so to me, it seems like there is a condition uh, that there's a spiritual location, that those who are receiving every spiritual blessing, that those blessings are located uh, in Christ. And, and that's why in the last video, I drew the circle that represented in Christ. And, and uh, Ephesians uh, 1, Paul seems to communicate that God has placed inside that circle of Christ every spiritual blessing. So those blessings are reserved for those in him, and, and nobody gets those blessings who are outside of him. But what Calvinism would seem to communicate is that before we're in Christ, we somehow get the spiritual blessing of being chosen by God. So, so first, we, we receive the spiritual blessing of being chosen, and next, we, we eventually get into Christ. Um, another way of, of looking at the problem would be that, um, again, Ephesians 1, 4 says that we're chosen in Christ uh, before the foundation of the world. So, it, so being chosen before the foundation of the world, that's located in Christ. But again, it seemed like Calvinism actually places that choice of God outside of Christ, where, where we're not chosen in Christ, but rather we're first chosen to eventually get into Christ. And so to me, what the problem arises from that is that that seems to not be uh, believers being or, or individuals being chosen in Christ, but, but individuals being chosen outside of Christ to they're being chosen to eventually get into Christ. And, and, and uh, I can find several quotes uh, from, from people like John Piper and, and uh, others who, who would communicate that idea um, when they uh, uh, look at Ephesians 1-4, is that God chooses us not in Christ, but he chooses us to get into Christ eventually. And that seems to be directly against actually what uh, Ephesians 1, 3-4 is communicating. So there's definitely... Um, some confusion in his question and, and I've been trying to help him work through some of these things but I told him we would try to get to it at some point um, and, and the reason he brought this up is because he, he found a video of some guy on YouTube that's like oh, I destroyed Calvinism with this argument and it was like that's not even how any of this works I don't see anything at all yeah. interesting in the argument at all I don't even I don't understand what the confusion is maybe I'm, I'm not hearing the yeah it's, it's weird and so because he told me that he's He's asked a bunch of Calvinists and nobody can answer the question. I'm like, well, it's because it's, it, it's not how soteriology works to begin with. Yeah. So he's, he's essentially saying that if, if Christ chose us before the foundation of the world, he's equating that with us then receiving every spiritual blessing in before Christ. Before the foundation of the world? Yeah. And so yeah. there's a point in time when that happens. Yeah. So there's Correct. Can, there's, there's a point some, of application. Yeah. There you go. That's, yeah. that's the answer to the question. Right. Is that there is an eternal decree by God given from before the foundation of the, the earth by the Father. Right. The Son enters into history to accomplish the means of that and then the Holy Spirit applies the saving benefits, everything that comes with that at a certain point in time. You look at the Apostle Paul. Okay, so if you're, if you're not hearing what they're saying, let me try to clarify. So basically they're saying there's an eternal decree of God where he chooses us. But, but that, that decree, it actually has an application at a point in time. And they, would, they go on to say that the point in time where that, that is applied, um, which I'm, I'm kind of confused about what they mean because it, it was certainly applied. There was an application of God actually choosing individuals. And, and I, I would uh, uh, really think that that's, they would be in agreement with that, that God applied the, uh, his choice of us 
at the point in time before the foundation of the world. And so if you put it on a, a, a timeline again, I think they would say that even at the point of natural birth, when a person is born into this world naturally, that at that point in time, there is an application of, of having been chosen by God already. So people enter into this world already uh, with the correct definition of being chosen. So what they're saying, that though, is that... Before the foundation of the world, God chooses us, and that's applied in time. And so they go on to communicate that there's a point in time at faith and repentance where where uh, salvation is applied. Um, again, I would say that I don't I don't really see how that that solves the problem. Um, but we'll finish listening to some of the things they say uh, before I explain that. And we know that faith in Jesus Christ is what brings God's justification declared mm -hmm. righteous so when i repent and believe that is when god declares me justified right mm -hmm. however but it was, it was god's plan all along <laughs> to save and to have me in christ and that i would be declared. okay that's really that that's getting at one of the main things that i wanted to to focus on right here is that if you didn't hear what he just said um Actually, let me go and play that again, because that's, that's a significant thing that he just said. Mm. However, but it was, it was God's plan all along <laughs> to save and to have me in Christ and that I would be declared righteous and filled with the Spirit of God. Okay, so what he just said is that it was God's plan all along to save and to have me in Christ. So if you see there, what he's saying is that God chose me and his plan all along for me as an individual uh, or for the elect as an individual was to have them in Christ. So, so what you see there is first, God, God chooses. We're not in Christ yet, right? And he, he was even making that distinction that, that it wasn't a choice of, of God choosing individuals in Christ. Rather, it was a choice of individuals to get into Christ or to eventually be in Christ. So, so there you have him communicating that getting Jesus is actually a fruit of election. That what happens first is that God chooses individuals and that choice of them, that, that mysterious blessing and favor we get from the Father, eventually brings us into connection and union with the Son. And so that is Jesus being a fruit of election rather than election, the spiritual blessing of election being a fruit of Jesus. And so there I feel like he's actually communicating uh, uh, rather than answering the issue, he's, he's kind of just restating the issue that I'm raising in the question. In this clip I'm about to play, Jeff brings up a verse from Acts 13.48, which uh, deserves some looking into and uh, is, is a common verse used to uh, support Calvinism. If you want to get some uh, a good explanation of that verse, I would I would recommend going to soteriology101.com or just, just search Acts 13.48. Layton Flowers on YouTube, and, and he has a lot of, uh, or at least a couple good videos where he deals with this verse, and uh, I think he gives an explanation that is, is very much worth considering. Um, but uh, I, I would like to make a video about that in the future, but for the sake of time in this one, um, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Yep, oh, that's it's, good. It's a big one. As many as were appointed to eternal life believed. So who believed? Those who had been yeah. appointed to eternal life. So <laughs> watch this. There was a moment where they heard, rejoiced, believed, but only the ones who were appointed to eternal life in that crowd believed, right? So what was necessary there is the appointment to eternal life. They believed. <laughs> and yeah. that's when they received every spiritual blessing. And right. that's when they received, right. yeah, justification. Yeah. The, they received all, was, all, all of that. One key thing to note about, about Acts 13.48 is that that word appointment, where it says that as many as were appointed to eternal life, these believed. If you look at that word appointment, it in no way conveys the idea of a pre-appointment or a predetermination. That isn't a, 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 an appointment that happened in eternity past. When that word is used other times throughout the New Testament, it, it's an appointment that happened then and there a, a lot in a lot of cases. It doesn't convey the idea of a, an eternity past, a foreordination or a, a predetermination of God. If that was what Luke was trying to communicate, he would have used a different word, the same word he used, uh, that is used in other New Testament passages when, it, when they are trying to communicate a, a pre determination. But that word pre, it's not in there. It's just there's an appointment. It's definitely up for contention what, what is actually meant by Luke there. Yeah, I, I would love to, to dive into that a little bit deeper in the future. 
But for the sake of time, I want to just focus in on, on what he just said. So you heard him say uh, that it was at the point in time where the, they believed, they received, they repented. At that point in time, uh, uh, Luke said, okay, so it was at that point in time that they received every spiritual blessing. And Jeff said, yes, at that point in time. So thinking about this, again, in terms of, of a timeline, that at this point in time, they're in agreement, and I totally agree with them, that it, it was at this point in time is what they're saying. Right here is where uh, believers uh, received every spiritual blessing. Um, so what they're saying is there's uh, faith and repentance happened. The Gentiles heard the gospel, and, and rather than being like the Jews who ignored it, and uh, they, they considered themselves unworthy of eternal life is what uh, Luke writes down. Rather than that, they, they received it, they embraced it, they believed it. And what, what Jeff and Luke communicate here is that it's at this point in time that believers, that, that those Gentiles received every spiritual blessing. So the implication of that is that prior to this point in time, they did not have every spiritual blessing or any spiritual blessings. But again, they would also say that before this point in time, they, they had the spiritual blessing of being chosen. That, that what they're communicating here is that they, these, these Gentiles entered into to the situation being God's cheap, sheep belonging to him, uh, being his own. That from the time of birth and before that, really, up to this point in time where they actually believed and repented, they uh, were chosen, that they belonged to God. They were his own. And so somehow they're saying, no, you don't get every spiritual blessing until you believe and repent. But yet they're saying you had, you, you possessed really the spiritual blessing of being chosen prior to that point in time. Again, I would say that if, if this is the point in time where we get in Christ, but prior to that we're chosen by God, then again, that is a, a, an election in the Father. That's being chosen in the Father or that's, that's being chosen outside of Christ. That's not being chosen in Christ. If we're chosen in Christ, then in some way it has to be conditioned on this point, that, that, that uh, to be chosen in Christ, it, it, you can't say we're not in Christ, but yet we're chosen in Christ. Um, I, I think what that, what that reveals is a, a strange idea of, of what it means to be in Christ, of what in Christ means. To be in Christ is to not be an Adam. But the Bible would communicate that at this point, from the time of uh, sin and, and uh, uh, living in unbelief and, and rejection of God, up to this point of faith and, and salvation, that at this point we were actually in Adam. We weren't in Christ. But somehow there's the idea coming out of, of Calvinism that would say we're both in Adam at the same time that we belong to God and we're chosen by him. And uh, I, just, I just feel like this is an issue that isn't really considered much or thought about much. And, and again, I, I haven't really heard a decent reply to. This just seems to be a contradiction. And what, what they'll say in this video at, at one point is they talk about how uh, this is all just coming down to a misunderstanding that God is not limited by time, that he's not bound by time. Um, and I understand what they're saying, but I think the problem with that is that we're both in agreement that there is an actual point in time where we get in Christ. Um, that yes, God's not bound by time, obviously, and he sees all things from beginning to end, but there is an actual point in time where we come to be in Christ. And there is an actual point in time prior to that where we're not in Christ. It really is very simple. And so, so either we're, we're actually chosen in Christ or we're not. Um, and I, I think to, to say that this is an issue of misunderstanding that God's not limited by time is, is really just kind of a, a distraction or deflection from the actual issue. Um, again, of course, God's not limited by time, but we both agree that it is a specific time at this point in time where we come to be in Christ. And so prior to that, there is a, there, we, we, we are not in Christ. And so it can't be said that if we're chosen prior to that, that we're chosen in Christ. Mm -hmm.